independent of Rome and very self-sufficient. And that is kind of what's portrayed in this letter too, is that this church had become self-sufficient. And instead of depending on Christ, they were trusting in themselves. So the city was also known as a center for fashion and banking. So it was kind of like the Mulan, or not the Mulan, yeah, yeah, of Asia Minor. So it was like the fashion place. So, and a great deal of their wealth stemmed from the clothing industry, which they produced like this fine, glossy black wool. And the city of Laodicea was also famous for its expertise in optometry. So if you had any kind of eye problem, you would go to Laodicea and they would help you out because they'd, they'd come up with this Phrygian powder, which, which had somehow how cured eye problems. And so a lot of people from the whole area would come to get their eyes checked out. So the city also prided itself on high fashion, wealth, and eye care. For Christ to call the Laodiceans naked, poor, and blind, it had to be surprising to them. For a city that was known for its fashion, for a city that was known for its eye care, and a city that is known for being rich, to be called the very opposite of what they were. To call someone naked who is clothed may seem odd, but let's consider if Christ were calling the emperor's new clothes nakedness. So I'm going to share with you guys the emperor's new clothes. How many of you guys are familiar with that story? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's kind of funny. It's the Muppets, and Fozzie's the emperor. And if you don't know the story, I'll just give you a quick little background. There was an emperor, and he, he prided himself in what he wore, and he hired these two guys to make him clothing. And they were out to uh, hoodwink him, basically. And they took all of his money and pretended to sew nothing. And he was parading around naked. And this is what happened. Clothes. Now, now listen, I should tell you all that these clothes cannot be seen by the dull and uncultured. Right? Oh, oh, oh yes. Yes, I had no trouble seeing them. Mm. They were grand, mm. magnificent, yes. magnificent, yes. glorious. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or cold. 
and it's like a spiritual condition, but that's not what he's talking about. Really what, what John is referring to is uh, usefulness. So when you make jello, you don't you need hot water and you need really cold water. And so it's useful. If you have lukewarm water, it isn't useful. Okay, so lukewarm water is not useful. So you need to have hot water to dissolve the jello and cold water for it to set properly. And if you were to use lukewarm water, the jello would not dissolve and you'd have powdered chunks. So the Laodicean church was not useful to Christ. And he warns them that he's going to spit them out of his mouth in chapter 1, verse 16. He's a double-edged sword proceeding from his mouth. Usefulness to Christ is imperative. As Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13, If the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything, except to be thrown down and trampled by men. Trampled and spewed. Neither of these words paint a very positive picture. And Christ requires us to be a faithful witness, not only with our mouths, but with our deeds. Otherwise, he'll pronounce judgment and find our deeds incomplete. In verse 20, Christ stands at the church door knocking. Many people have portrayed this door to be the door of a lost person's heart. However, this isn't a good interpretation. Really? It's the church door. So Christ is outside. He's wanting to come in. What is Christ doing outside the church? That's what I asked myself when I read this. And I find that so sad that Christ would be outside the church. Why would he not be in the very center of it? This picture is all wrong. And if Christ were standing outside my door or the door to our church, I would hope that we would repent. So there would be no need to have church if Christ were not the center of it. Were the Laodiceans somehow like having cocktail hour? I can't even imagine this. But I would have given up a long time ago if the church that I had died for, if I was Christ, had shut me out. Yet Christ humbles himself and not still desiring fellowship with the church that has closed the door on him. Christ did not barge in and demand worship. Instead, he stood outside patiently knocking. Christ was offering intimacy, not punishment. He desired to sit and to eat with them. Christ's counsel to the church of Laodicea was to earnestly repent, and he wanted them to turn around and change direction. They needed to put him first and at the center of the church. They needed to purchase gold from him. And he longed to clothe them in white robes and anoint their eyes in order that they might see so this carries with it the idea of overcoming. But this morning, what I really want to get across is where are we in our relationship with Christ? Are we finding our meaning in something by what, what we wear or where we sit or where our position is? Are we finding our meaning in Christ? Is he standing outside our door knocking? Are we going to let him in? Have you guys found meaning in something other than Christ? Are you naked or poor or blind or all of these? So this morning, I just want you guys to think about that. To think about where am I and where would Christ say that I am? Am I putting all my faith in what I can do or, what, or who I think I am? Or am I putting my faith in Christ? And am I going to let his perspective prevail in my life? So I'll just end here. Father, I thank you and I pray, God, that you help us to have our, your perspective on our lives, Father to see things the way that you see them. In your name, Jesus. Amen.